You ever wonder what Elvis Presley used to drive around at the weekends? We're going to show you. Guys, uh, before we start the video, public service announcement. A lot of people message me telling me that there's been somebody pretending to be me reaching out with a WhatsApp number here in the comments on YouTube. It is not me. I'll never send you a number to text me, to contact me. It just won't happen. So if you see that, please report it. And uh, guys, be careful out there. It's, it's dangerous, there's a lot of scammers. So guys, I'm so excited to share something with you. I have recently teamed up with IFL Watches to create, are you ready for this? A limited edition producer Michael Cassioke. Check this out. So the dial artist literally hand paints every one of these dials and there's no two the same. And on top of that, they trade after the fact for double, triple sometimes their, their list price. So guys, yeah, if you want one of these, 200 of them, that's all there is. First come, first served. The link will be in the description. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be wearing G-Shocks. Cheers. Now to the video. Leslie, great to see you again. Great to see you, thank you. Leslie Kendall, Chief Historian. We're at the Peterson Museum and we're gonna show you a very, very special car. What have we got, Leslie? We have a 1971 Pantera, De Tommaso Pantera. And this belonged to Elvis Presley. That's what makes this car so interesting. But even beyond that, it's an interesting vehicle when you consider the time and the place that uh, it, it originated. Because by the time this car was introduced, keep in mind that the world's first mid-engine supercar, the Lamborghini Miura, had only been around for about half a decade. And a lot of people were jumping on the bag wagon or, or thinking about getting on it. Ford had already tried tentatively with the GT40 in the mid-60s, but then there was this kind of movement to, to make a car that was everything a car could possibly be, make it a real driver's car, but make it an up-to-date driver's car. And De Tommaso partnered with Ford. Ford had all the money and all the development resources. De Tommaso had all the ideas and all the engineering expertise. So, just like Carroll Shelby did with Ford and partnering to put a Ford engine in the Cobra, De Tommaso partnered with Ford to put a Ford engine in the Pantera. Now De Tommaso had made the De Tommaso Mongusta, uh, which was named after the mongoose, which was known for its ability to hunt and kill a Cobra. So you can kind of see- <laughs> That's funny. You can kind of see a little bit where they were going with this. Um, but this car has a 351 cubic inch Ford, of course, engine in it. Uh, hooked up to a transaxle, and it's a genuine mid-engine car. It's a legit, le legitimate uh, supercar in the modern idiom. Now, supercars uh, earlier, they had long hoods to accommodate gigantic engines. Uh, later on, they said, you know what, that's really not the way to do a supercar. We need to give it balance. We need to give it a better 50-50 weight distribution, or as close to it as we can. So let's put the engine in the middle. Let's put it in front of the axle, behind the driver. Uh, where it will heat up the cabin as fast as it possibly can and where it's most difficult to cool. Let me tell you something about, so way back in the day, I actually had a Pantera, I had the GTS, I think it was group four car. And it looked spectacular, it had the big bulging wheel arches and it was a superb looking car. It was a nightmare in the cabin. The heater would not switch off or maybe it wasn't the heater, it was just the heat. It, horrible and it didn't have air conditioning. There were a lot of things that it just couldn't overcome. Like you were talking about the heating problems. Well, it wasn't just the interior that was heating, uh, the engine would overheat because you had a lot of difficulty getting cooling air to a car with a mid-engine placement. So think of it, um, that's why they put, early on, that's why they put engines in the front of vehicles so the radiator could be right there so you get the cooling air, uh, the coolest air possible um, right at the very beginning, literally the very beginning of the car. And I know also this car has some very special secrets that are about to be revealed. Look where that engine is. Look where the engine, and you can see it's got the transaxle behind it. Uh, the engine, again, it's in front of the rear axle behind the passenger compartment. Again, that's true where- True mid-engine. True mid-engine. That's, um, sometimes there's front mid-engines, people, because they're behind the front axle, but SLR in front. Mercedes. Yes. It, it, that's, a, that's a perfect example, it's a great modern example of how to explain that. So where but, did this get the air from to cool it? Oh, well, it didn't, because they used to well, overheat and crazy the, <laughs> the air came in from, from the front, and the, the mechanism to channel it through the 
through the cooling tubes to get it through the uh, to the water jackets in the engine was a little bit haphazard, let's just say. That's why you ended up so hot in yours because the engine never really got a chance to cool itself down. Right, that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. And this is this car is not typical of, uh, of Pantera's because there would have been a platform here for luggage. Right, uh, mine had a trunk in it. Yours would have, yeah. yeah. So you would kind of expect that they might have put some vents here on the side to allow the air to channel in. Well, what, what's interesting is uh, the vents on the sides are ersatz vents, they're fake. Um, and they're behind the engine. What's that? The behind the engine, the engine's kind of here, right? Well, sometimes what you would have thought was they would put radiators here. Because radiator you could really put anywhere. If you're going to put it in the front, you might as well put it... Absolutely. Put it anywhere. And, Plus, uh, they look cool. It, but they look cool. I guess Ford or, or Gia, who designed the body, probably thought, well, you know, people are going to wonder if we don't give it cooling vents back there. So it looks cool, therefore it must be cool, therefore we're gonna do it. Tell us some of the crazy things that Elvis did. I know this is an infamous car, isn't well, it? Well, this is an infamous car um, in a lot of ways. Elvis could have anything he wanted. Uh, and in uh, about 1973, 1974, he had Linda Thompson. Um, he was dating Linda Thompson. Rumor has it that, that he, we know he acquired this car, but we believe he acquired it to give to Ms. Thompson. Well, she, she was ultimately, uh, we, we believe, Bruce Jenner's girlfriend. Elvis gave, gave her this car and he was known to drive it. Um, he was also known to have fits of rage and he was also known to um, have helped himself get over those fits of rage by firing guns and rifles and things um, into televisions if he didn't like the news. Uh, if you didn't like I've the never heard that. Did you know that, Adam? I had no idea. Uh, he was, uh, he, Elvis got his own way. And when he didn't get his own way, um, Out he, came a gun and he, he shoot got, something. He, he got a little bit upset and he got mad at this car. And he shot it. That he was trying to get started but wouldn't start. So he took out his personal firearm and, and shot it three times. He shot this car. He shot this car three times. That's crazy. So he must have been in the car when he shot it. No, no, no. no. We, we think he was. We think he got out of the car and, and shot it from here because the two bullet holes are actually in the steering wheel rim and that takes some, some either a precision, stroke of good luck precision or precision shooting. shooting. Right? And here's one of, the, one of the nicks, here's the other. And the other one is, is in a part of the uh, floor that's concealed because of the carpet. That's insane. But, but uh, I don't know that... I didn't know he shot things. I, 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 I had <laughs> never heard that before. He sometimes did. Um, it's, you know... We um, we're imperfect people, <laughs> right? You know, we always have we have I guess our, some are little less imperfect than others. <laughs> so, so if he didn't like the news, he would shoot the television. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's fairly well known. He would be in a hotel. He didn't like it was on Bam. Uh, so he was Elvis. Um, yeah, Elvis could he, do anything, right? He could. You know, it's like put it on my tab. So how long did Elvis own this car? And was it ever his personally or did he gift it to we, the girlfriend? We really do not know that. This is known, this is known to have been Elvis's personal car. Uh, in fact, Mr. Peterson found out about this car being in a collection in Nevada, bought the entire collection to get this and another car. Uh, ended up one by one letting the other cars go, but this is Mr. Peterson personally. But this is also Mr. Peterson looking out for the Peterson Automotive Museum because he knew that you cannot have a museum in Los Angeles and not talk about Hollywood and not talk about the, the fame and the, the kind of privileges that very famous people uh, were, were afforded. And one of those privileges, I suppose, was to be able to shoot a car <laughs> I get away with it. <laughs> and Unbelievable. Interestingly, we had to take the engine out to service it for the car. And we found broken glass uh, in, in areas that you normally wouldn't expect to see broken glass. So we do believe that when, when the bullet went through, it, it had to go through the window and it just exploded on, on impact and it, it, it sent glass flying everywhere. Incredible. So, so it's, it's an interesting car. Um, the inside it, of it is quite amazing picture yourself a lincoln mercury customer then you go in all of a sudden you see this italian e exotic which was again very exotic for the day and it had really well equipped with gauges uh it, ha it had a nice steering wheel it didn't have one of those chest stabbers that people were were um kind of just getting over from the 60s i'll tell you something that mine used to do so the radio is vertical instead of horizontal i don't know if you you saw that adam 
Um, the car that I had had a, a cassette in it. The center console would get so hot, it would literally melt the tape in the cassette. <laughs> and I would pull the cassette out, it would go, oh, the music, it would stop. And then you'd take the cassette out, you'd eject it, and it would literally... No way. Yeah, yeah like, like meters or yards of tape would come out because it would melt the whole system. So hot. May I say that that's how you know it's a real one. If your Pantera doesn't overheat, if it doesn't bake your cassette tapes, it probably is not a real one. It's, really? It's probably... <laughs> It's there you go. I guess it, I had an authentic car. It, it's probably, and it, it's a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek thing to say, but, but um, you, know, you know, cars, like Elvis himself, cars were temperamental. Well, there's, there's and also the best cars, you know, had had the most temperamental um, issues, but they were also the ones that you wanted the most because if you could tame a temperamental car like this, you could tame anything. And people who looked at you and watched you drive these things around, kind of knew in the back of mind that that you could. Mine had another problem as well, and that was any time that you'd driven it, and if you parked it, left it for say half an hour, you could not start that car again. It would stink of gas, wouldn't start, you have to leave it so it goes ice cold before you can start it again, or really hot it would start. But in the middle temperatures, not a chance. Well, what was interesting about this car, um, Ford didn't have all of the uh, kinks ironed out of it, so he had ended up, pardon me, Ford ended up sending it to Bill Straub the uh, very famous engine tuner who made speed equipment for engines and did, and did so well in uh, American car racing. Uh, and he helped get some of the kinks out of these, out of these engines. Um, you know, where Ford you know, couldn't, did not have the internal resources to pay attention to such a small scale um, uh, product line, um, they, they got an expert in who did. Like when they started building the Shelby Mustang, they got Carroll Shelby in. Right. Um, they so didn't get the, the expert in on my car because it did, would never say. Have you heard of that problem maybe, before? Maybe it was a different kind of expert that they were using. <laughs> Possibly. So I have a question for you. Um, how much did you pay for yours when it was new? Oh gosh, uh, I didn't buy it new. I bought, okay. it, I bought it in the, I think it was the late 80s. Maybe 25,000 pounds, somewhere around there. And do you know what they're worth now? I haven't a clue, but I would guess 150, 200,000 pounds. Okay. Dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I really don't know. It, after owning one, I never wanted to own another one. It's like the <laughs> Lotus. Lots of trouble, usually serious, right? Um, I owned multiple Lotuses because I just loved the car. Each one was worse than the, the next. And one day I'll tell you a story about what I did with the Lotus. I know what you did with the Lotus. Okay. Well, we won't put that on tape. <laughs> but I avoid cars that gave me trouble. But this is a gorgeous specimen. Really, is a gorgeous, gorgeous specimen. It's lovely and. And again, the reason we, we put up with this is, is it's so sexy. It really is. And there was nothing it, like it in the it, day. There's, there's nothing like it, especially in the day. You have to consider what it was like in the day. Um, you this know, is a 74? This is a 71. 71, this is the, the, 71. But we believe that he got it for Linda Thompson in 73, 74. So right. he bought her essentially a used car, you know, having done the math. Um, but uh, we're not sure why. We don't know the circumstances. But, but we, we, do have, we do have the documentation. That it, that it was the car that he shot. Interesting. This has been amazing, and thank you so much for showing it to us. I know we're gonna go and see some more cars now, which we will put in another video. Lots of cars coming your way, so please hit the like button if you liked it. I hope you liked it. How did you not like this Elvis Presley's car? One of the most knowledgeable people in the automotive industry in the world and i say that i know i've you're, done my research you're very kind <laughs> I, I, I know so yeah don't if you like it like the, the video hit the like button hit the subscribe button we're in it to win it don't shoot your car